Hi, I'm Chris, and in case you didn't notice, I'm a little on the hefty side. So I wanted to make a video discussing Tess Holliday being on the cover of Cosmopolitan, and in this video, we're gonna be discussing amazing topics such as fat shaming, body positivity, mental health, and all sorts of good stuff, so stay tuned. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about helping you improve your mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that kind of stuff, make sure you subscribe, ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. So how does being obese tie in with mental health? Like, do I even need to ask that? Like, it's obvious, okay? Um, I've made plenty of videos about this in the past and I will link some of them up in the info card. Make sure you go check them out. So there's a lot of debate going on around Tess Holiday being on the cover of Cosmopolitan. So uh, I, I've talked about this in other videos. I've talked about body positivity. So if you want to, go check out the full video that I made about it, but like, uh, a lot of this stuff, like, I, I'm a person of logic and a lot of self-awareness, too. And in no universe or reality am I ever going to tell you that with my weight that I am in prime physical condition. Like, that's just not the truth. That's not the truth at all. Um, I have lost about 50 pounds in the last year or so, and I'm continuing on that journey, especially now that I got laid off. I've been getting to the gym as much as possible. I've been really trying to watch what I eat, trying to not go to certain places. I'm also vegetarian. I might make a video about that at some time. Like, I'm, I'm actively working on this. So. Uh, it, it's difficult, the debate is difficult. It's a, it's a hard one to look at, okay? Because there's posi body positivity, there's fat shaming, and you know, uh, a good point that I saw, you know, some people bring up is, you know, one of the issues that we had was, you know, like putting these beauty standards on women or even men, like guys too, like, oh, this is what you need to look like to be, you know, somebody, at, you know, uh, who is attractive, right? And like, you know, especially when it came to traditional modeling, these were these stick thin women. And, you know, a lot of them struggled with eating disorders and things like that, and they weren't eating healthy. So they were not physically healthy and the beauty standards kind of screw things up. But the, the argument is, is with, you know, saying it's okay to be this size, is that promoting an unhealthy lifestyle? When we have an epidemic, you know, in the United States as well as other countries where people are overweight and obese, like there, there's this balance, right? So, uh, so much of this comes down to loving yourself and being okay with yourself. Like me personally, it's taken so, so, so long to love myself. Like I spent, years, years of my life, over 20 years of my life, just sitting there, just think about how it's not fair that other people who eat far worse than I do, who exercise far less than I do, have these amazing bodies, right? And this would make me go back and forth in these, you know, different phases of screw everything, I'm just gonna eat whatever I want because whatever, like I just don't care, but it was also bumming me out, you know, and it was affecting my physical health. And like, the thing is, I have to take responsibility for me and my own actions, right? I don't, I don't need people to, you know, accept me just the way I am. Like, I, I need to work on accepting myself, you know? I am the, re I, my actions, my decisions are the result of this body. You know what I'm saying? So it has to come from the inside of whether or not I wanna change that. Um, I have a son. He's nine years old, uh, nine and a half, gotta be 10. I wanna be around for him, I need to be around for him. But, you know, with weight issues come heart issues and heart disease and things like that. I need to make sure that I'm around for this kid. And that's kind of one of my main motivations for this. But something that Tess Holiday talks about is her mental health and how it's affected her weight, it's affected her efforts to lose weight and things like that. And Here's, here's actually a clip of her talking about it, then we'll come back and discuss it. While focus lies on her exterior appearance, Holiday opens up about an internal battle telling Cosmo UK about her struggle with mental health. Now that I'm on the other side and feeling better about my mental health, I'm able to actually say, okay, I wanna like work out more, do this. Like, you know, it's, you have to take care of, of 
your mental state before you can worry about anything else. Bingo. So this is something that a lot of people don't understand. Like when Nicole Arbor made her fat shaming video, like she does everything else. Like shaming people in any aspect, whether it's mental health or whether it's uh, their physique or anything like that, it's been proven time and time and time again through various studies that this is not effective, okay? And the, the opposite side of this argument is they try to find these like fringe examples like, well, it worked for this person, like, no. Like for, for the majority of people, this stuff doesn't work. So when it comes to eating habits and being healthy and stuff like that, like, we, we get more depressed when people are shaming us for our weight, when people are being terrible towards us for our weight. See, a lot of people, and I made a video on this, I'm actually gonna link this. They, they did a study, okay? This is where the adverse childhood experiences test actually got created. They found that most people with obesity issues suffered from some kind of childhood trauma, whether it was physical, physical or emotional or sexual, whatever it was, they suffered from that. And that's what led to their their eating behaviors, you know what I mean? So mental health and obesity are very closely tied in together. And what happens is if you're eating because you're depressed and then you're getting shamed constantly from it, you're getting more depressed. And if depression is your trigger to eat unhealthy foods, then there's an issue. And this is why we need to really work on compassion, kindness, empathy, and things like that. I can tell you something that I've noticed about my personal eating habits. I eat very unhealthy. Uh, foods when I get angry, when I get angry. Like uh, I, I, I haven't made nearly enough videos about anger management and stuff like that, but I used to be a very angry person. One of the reasons I abused substances for so long was to, you know, tranquilize my anger, if you will, and it was very unhealthy. But now, you know, my anger is mostly at bay, but when, when something becomes really frustrating, maybe I'm just dealing with like computer issues or editing issues with my videos or something like that. Like I am like, I need a, I need to go get a milkshake. Screw everything, I just, I, I just don't care. I need something unhealthy, right? And that's not healthy, right? So the more that we improve our mental health, the more likely we are to start doing things proactively to improve our physical health as well. There's so many ties between mental and physical health. And I've had a few of you request me do videos on that. I'm actually working on a collaboration with my buddy from the uh, the channel, Trey Jones. Uh, go check his channel out. He collabed with me a few weeks ago. Um, his channel is all about anxiety. If you're into that stuff, he talks a lot about health and nutrition and the uh, benefits when it comes to uh, treating your mental health. Make sure you check that out. And I personally need to do some more videos on it. But there's so many ways that this ties in. So a lot of this and what Tess Holliday's talking about in that clip I showed you is she had to learn how to love herself fully before she was willing to lose the weight. And something that's really interesting, and I might make a video about that, is there's so many people, and whether it's weight issues or other aspects of somebody's life, like we, we eventually adopt these as part of our identity. So like, for example, with Tess Holiday, what I'm getting at is my fear for her would be so much of her identity is tied around her weight that she might fear losing that weight because it would be losing a part of her. And she might justify that like, oh, well, how can I be a plus size model if I'm no longer plus size? And there might be fear, would I be able to be a, a normal size model? You know what I'm saying? So this happens too with mental illness. Some people are afraid of treating their anxiety or treating their depression because it's become so ingrained with their identity. And that's really fascinating to me. And I want some of you to really look at yourself and see if that might be something that's holding you back from getting help. Um, I'm gonna write a note as soon as I finish this video. This is something that actually held me back from getting clean and sober because it was part of my identity. Like, um, as somebody who never knew who I was or where I fit in, like, I found an identity as being the addict or being the alcoholic, being the guy who drinks all the time, being the partier. And some of those things that we latch onto are actually hurting us immensely and we don't realize it. Um, but anyways, I wanted to make this video since it's been such a topic of conversation about Tess Holiday and uh, body positivity and fat shaming and stuff like that. But I would love to know your comments down below. And I don't know why this popped into my head because I have one of the most amazing audiences out there and I know so many of you are very kind, but please try to be kind in the comments and don't be rude if you disagree with Tess Holiday's lifestyle 
or if you don't like the fact that I'm fat, <laughs> like try to be kind. Um, I don't know, I just want this to be a loving, compassionate, empathetic community. I know I have these crazy dreams of this, you know, tra-la-la, beautiful world, but hey, maybe someday, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for you for now. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make so many videos to help you out with your mental health. And a huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon, helping me spread this message of hope for anybody struggling with their mental health. If you wanna check out uh, the Rewired Stole shop, boom, click or tap right there. All right, I love you all. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.